tonight we're going to talk about artificial intelligence or AI. We can use AI and already are using AI for so many things from healthcare to education to navigation and beyond. But AI is also being developed for darker purposes. There's a joke that real AI is always 30 years away. And it has been for a long time, but it's not anymore. As these systems are making more and more of our decisions, how do we have them make decisions that we feel good about and do right by our ideals as a society? We heard earlier this headline from the Vanity Fair, can AI make writers obsolete? There might be an alternate argument, can AI make studio executives obsolete? <laughs> Which might be easy, just have to teach them to say no. <laughs> that said, how do you start to create a more accountable narrative that doesn't romanticize AI because Hollywood's response has largely been to romanticize it and to use it as a plot device, not as something that is potentially problematic. One of the ground zero use cases for how are we going to use AI as a society? Where are we going to start to draw the lines? Is this idea of letting an algorithm, letting software decide who lives and who dies? When we talk about the arms race dynamics or the risks of proliferations of these systems because they're cheap and they're ubiquitous. And then living in a world where war is now happening not at speeds that human beings can control, but machine speeds, that's all very scary to us. I wrote the episode Killer Robots in 2019. The issues that the show dramatized have actually become more pointed. The episode revolved around a debate of whether to use a ground, unmanned, autonomous vehicle to go into a cave and to kill a terrorist. And the ethical problems with that kind of transfixed us because that sounds good in the abstract, right? But what if you have a terrorist in a cave and you wind up realizing there are children in a cave or the cave is underneath the hospital? The algorithm is not going to account for any of that. So it felt like a worthy debate to have. I think it's very important that these stories be told. The way that humans understand the world is through stories. Things that are technical and dry and scientific, even though they're really important, people aren't really going to attach to them unless there's a story behind them. So I think getting that intimate connection between the policymakers and the scientists and the storytellers in Hollywood and elsewhere is really crucial. People will see things in science fiction and want to go make them in real life. I remember way back on Star Trek The Next Generation, the way that set was, unlike the original Star Trek series, there weren't buttons on anything. We had these flat panels which were backlit graphics and the idea was the displays would always self-configure. We all thought it was a terrible idea. We go, there's no buttons. You don't know what you're pushing. This is silly. No one's ever going to have it. They even called them pads on the show, P-A-D-Ds. And sure enough, here we are. We're using them all. Even if we present something that's potentially dystopic, like the killer bots, we strive to get to the place where it's the triumph of human virtue. Shows like West Wing, Madam Secretary, a lot of television shows, they'll present technology in an ominous way, but they'll also say, look, humanity has the power to exercise its reason and intellect and create a world that's not dystopic. As with many powerful technologies, there are real dangers, and if we don't take them seriously, we will fall into those dangers. But the reason we develop technology is because Historically, it has made all our lives much better. And the fact that we have a large population that's fairly nonviolent and lives to an old age and is well fed is technology. I'm like weirdly the optimist on this panel because <laughs> all of the things that we see in the expanse are essentially made possible by sophisticated AIs and ships that move through space and can dock with incredibly difficult spinning space stations and do things that none of which would be possible without that kind of technology. I'm just super excited about AI for everything. As AI gets more and more powerful, I look at my own field. I come from a medical background, and we're learning new stuff every day. How proteins fold. This has been a problem that has puzzled scientists forever, and then AI discovered how that works. And this is unlocking a whole new era of discovery of new medicines. And so the fact that we have things like that where a field can fundamentally change overnight and now we can solve a whole new set of problems we never thought possible, that's really exciting to me. There's a lot of skepticism and, and concern about AI and that's rightly so. But it's important to keep in mind that the reason people are putting all this time and energy and effort and intellectual firepower into developing AI and other technologies is because they really think it's going to be good. 
I can probably sum it up with maybe my favorite line from The Simpsons, which is Homer Simpson says, to alcohol, the cause of and solution to all of life's problems. <laughs> that is how I feel about technology. <laughs>